Delighted to be with you, Mr. KK Mistry. Uh, I'm Namita Jain. I'm also a fellow Sidhamite. And thank you so much for your time uh, and uh, taking this time out for this, for, for a few of my questions. Sure. Um, the first question is, you know, we've been through turbulent times. Uh, we've seen demonetization and the pandemic. Uh, what do you think, are you bullish on the future economy of India? I am extremely bullish. Yes, yes. We're not bullish, extremely yes. bullish. I think India's growth is the fastest in the world. If you look at the last uh, last month's data, RBI has revised the GDP target upwards from 65 to 7%. Mm -hmm. And my sense is we end the year with an even higher number. Mm -hmm. And you to compare the 7% with the global average, which is significantly lower. If you take the emerging markets as a group, the GDP growth is expected to be about 4%. And if you take the advanced economies, it will be much lower than that. So we are, we, we are in a very strong way. I think we have to thank the government. The government did a fabulous job during the COVID period to make sure that we did not just keep pumping liquidity in the system, which would then create a lot of inflation. We kept the fiscal deficit, fiscal numbers in mind, and therefore we did not get terrible inflation. Inflation has largely been controlled. We are the fourth largest uh, foreign exchange reserves in the world, $604 billion as the last number that I saw. Uh, 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 inflation is under control, interest rates would probably come down in the course of early 2024 is my sense. So all in all, India is very strong. We have a strong banking sector, very underpenetrated market. So the growth opportunities which are there for the financial sector in India is phenomenal. We have a young population, two thirds of our population is below 35 years of age. And therefore, all these people as they start consuming, as they start getting older, they start earning and they start spending, the economy will be on an autopilot kind of thing. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, I would love to know what is your wellness mojo? What do you do for recreation? Well, I am very fond of old Hindi film songs. Yes. So if you look at the, uh, you know singers like Mohammad Rafi or Mukesh or uh, Himan Kumar or Mahindra Kapoor or uh, Lata Mangeshkar, Rasha Bosley, I love hearing those songs. So the way I get out of stress, and yes. there is obviously a lot of stress yes. on day-to-day -day life, I go back to my room, hear music, and sometimes I, I read. So I used to be very fond of reading at one time, today less so, yes. but even today I read a lot. My favorite books are uh, Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, Why I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am, which was by Reverend John Powell, and I love reading P.G. Williams. So Lovely. I, I love Fountainhead too. Um, you are you are a corporate leader. What is the inspiration you would give to the viewers? I think very difficult to summarize that yes. in a matter of a few seconds or yes. a few minutes, but yeah. let me try and do that. I think the first and foremost and the most important is hard work. Do not take easy steps. Do not take short-term views on anything. Look long-term. Your vision should be not for the next quarter or the quarter after that. Your vision should be five years later, ten years later. And you have to keep, uh, you know, keep 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 the look, keep a close lookout on what changes are coming in your sector. You know, if you look 20 years back, there were so many companies world over which were doing fabulously well. And because of changes in technology, because of changes, because it just become, you know, the, the technology has become outdated. Today, these companies are no longer in existence. So you must be ready for change, anticipate change. Don't believe you know everything. Continue upgrading your knowledge as you go through go through life. Uh, be positive in your in what you are doing. Uh, be self confident in what you are doing. And I think very importantly, surround yourselves with people who are also self confident and people who are also similar to you, your, to what you are. Pursue your passion. Don't do something you don't want to do just because somebody else is telling you to do it. Do it because you want to do it. And I think most important of all. Keep the highest, and I repeat, the highest standard, standards of ethics and governance and integrity in whatever you do. There is no uh, cushion in this world which is as soft as a clear conscience. So keep that in mind in everything you do. And be grateful, be humble. Don't let success get to your head. Always be approachable to people. And keep certain broad principles in mind. Never compromise on ethics. Never compromise on principles. Be humble. Be available to people and be polite, be, be compassionate to other people's problems. Those are in very few words I'm trying to summarize for you. Such wonderful words. Uh, we have the Sydney College reunion coming up. What do you think is the significance of 
these college reunions, sit and get togethers. I think very yeah. important because it gets people of all ages together. Yes. So in my batch, for example, and yeah. I passed out many, many years ago, there is still a Sydney group which is run by one of my one of my one of my friends. Yes. And lots of people, lots most many people from that group, many people from that class are now yeah. part of that group. So it helps get get some degree of attachment to people. But physical contact yes. with people doesn't happen often. And occasions like the Sydney reunion are a great occasion where people can get together and physically meet each other. So I think it's a great idea. I think it should be encouraged. Yes. And I think any help that ex Sydneyites could give to the yes. to the project would really be something that would, should be appreciated. Thank you so much, Mr. Mistry, for your time and for your words of wisdom and inspiration. Thank you, Thank you so Thank you. much.